We want to welcome you to Hope Family Church, Haynes Ministries, The Word New Season. I'm Steve. I'm here with my wife, Susan, my daughter-in-law, Danielle, my son, Josh. And we're going to study the Word tonight. We're going to go over John chapter 5. But I think before we go any further, I'm going to ask my wife, Susan, to pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for all those that have joined us today, God. And we pray that you would just open our eyes and our hearts to receive what the Holy Spirit is speaking to us through your Holy Word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <clears throat> We're going through the life of Jesus here. We're in John chapter 5, the Gospel of John. And the last time we talked about the Samaritan woman and how she went and testified and many sick Samaritans believed and the Samaritans were hated by the Jews, but yet... Jesus took time to, to visit with her. Amen. Yeah. And uh, her one testimony uh, turned the town around. And uh, you might, last time I said, uh, you know, that some are called to the multitudes and some are called to the one. Uh, maybe you're called to the one, but the one you might uh, witness to might lead a multitude to the Lord. Amen. So, don't uh, fret if you're not out preaching to the thousands. Just start with the one. Amen. Amen. This week we're going over John chapter 5. And we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the healing at the pool. And I'm going to be reading from the New International Version. And my wife has the New King James Version. And I believe Josh and Danielle have the ESV. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, but in from the New International Version in John chapter 5, verse 1, it says, Sometime later Jesus went up to Jerusalem for a feast of the Jews. Now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? You know, Jesus is asking us that today. Do you want to get well? And he could be talking physically. He could be talking spiritually. He could be talking mentally. You're watching and you're listening and... Or maybe you're watching down the road after this has been recorded. Well, it's never too late to get saved with Jesus. Amen. At the end of this Bible study, my wife's going to offer to you a salvation prayer. And if you want to get well spiritually, well, today's the day of salvation. Amen. Amen. But it says in verse 7, it says, Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool and the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Uh, I guess it had been reported back in those days that when the water stirred, uh, people could get, could get in and get healed. Uh, it must have been uh, angels stirring the water or something. Well, you that's know. what it says, yeah. And, yeah, and, uh, you know, and he was waiting for the water to get stirred, I guess, for... 38 years, someone had always beat, a, beat him ahead, you know, and, and get in before him, and, and uh, you know, he wasn't able to get in, but Jesus said, uh, uh, said, Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me in the pool, and the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. At once the man was cured, he picked up his mat and walked. The day on which this took place was the Sabbath, and so the Jews said to the man who, who had been healed, It is a Sabbath. The law forbids you to carry your mat. <laughs> but he replied, The man who made me well said to me, Pick up your mat and walk. So they asked him, Who is this fellow who told you to pick it up and walk? The man who was healed had no idea who it was for Jesus had slipped away into the crowd that was there. Uh, you know, the <clears throat> Jewish leaders didn't care that the man had been healed. They only cared about the fact that he had been carrying a mat. On the Sabbath day. And it was a Sabbath day. 
And uh, did you have any comment you want to make on that? Well, I will. I'm here in a few minutes. I will. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> it says, verse 14, Later Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, See, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. Now, did you uh, want to make a comment on... Well, um, yeah, I'll, um, they're going to say some more here in a little bit, okay. but I will make a com I'll go ahead and make a comment. But, you know, for centuries... Um, the Jewish people had been waiting for their Messiah to come. I mean, they'd prophesied about it. They'd uh, preached about it in the, in the church or the synagogue or in the temple, so to speak. They'd read scriptures. They'd studied it. These, the leadership had studied it. The leadership shared the people. But to me, it was so funny when the Messiah came, they were so caught up in touch not, handle not, taste not, you know, in their little rules, that they missed it. And here they are, all upset because Jesus healed on the Sabbath day. They weren't saying, oh, this might be the one we've been waiting for. They weren't, they didn't recognize them because they just got caught up in their traditions and they really and truly weren't looking for him anymore. I mean, even though they said they were, even though they talked about it, even though they prayed about it. I think I, I heard that at the uh, wedding ceremonies they used to say may you be the one that bears the Messiah because you know they thought that maybe the woman that new bride was going to be the one that bore the Messiah because they didn't completely understand the virgin birth because they used the same word in the Hebrew for virgin as they did young woman or young unmarried woman so they they would prophesy that and and they had their own expectations how everything was going to happen. But they were so caught up in all their little traditions that they missed it. They missed the whole point. They missed the Messiah, the, the King of Glory, the Anointed One, the Christ. You know, they missed him because they're caught up in, you're not supposed to be carrying your bed or your mat on the Sabbath day. What are you doing? You know, and he said, well, the man that healed me told me to do it. And they're going... Huh? Who, who healed you? And he didn't even know. And, and, and that blesses me too because um, all Jesus did is go ask that man if he wanted to be well. And he didn't exactly say, yes, I want to be well, but Jesus knew he did because he wouldn't be sitting there waiting for the stirring of the water if he didn't, you know. So he was waiting there uh, trying to get, he wanted to be healed even though he didn't have someone to put him in the water, he was still trying to get in that pool, you know, and get healed, even though he couldn't. And Jesus had mercy and compassion and love on him. And even though the guy didn't say, yes, I want to be healed, he just explained to him why he couldn't be. And Jesus had mercy on him and healed him anyway. And But the man, you know, he spoke, Jesus spoke, um, I believe something quickened in that man when Jesus spoke to him. He, when he said, get up. Take up your bed and walk. When he said that to him, I believe that faith stirred in this man's heart. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I believe something quickened. Have you ever felt something move you, you know, when someone said something? Well, you know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And the word of God was speaking to this man. He said, get up, pick up your bed and walk. And something stirred in this man and he did it. He didn't stand, sit there and argue and say, oh, but I didn't get in the water first or or I can't walk. You know, he didn't, he just something stirred in him and he jumped up and obeyed and he was healed. And the first place, where'd he go? Where'd he go? The first place he went was the temple. He gave glory to God. This man, a guy healed, was going to the temple and give glory to God. And, you know, because it says later, you know, it says that he went, he saw Jesus in the temple. And, you know, so have we got to verse 14 yet? Yeah. Oh, we read so that? We'll go ahead and read it again. Okay. But anyway, so it says, verse 14, Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple. So see, this man had gone straight to the temple. He gave glory to God. He knew it was God that healed him. He had no doubt in his mind. He didn't understand that Jesus was the Messiah, but he was ready to believe him. And afterward, 
Jesus found the temple and said, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest the worst thing come on you. And the man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus that had made him well. And, and you know, like some people might take this scripture 14 where Jesus says, See, you've been made healed. Sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. You know, some people take scriptures like that and they say that everybody that's sick, you know, they've sinned and that's how they've done. That's why they're where they are. Well, that's not necessarily true. You know, Jesus is trying, there's another scripture where these uh, men brought their friend that was a paralytic to Jesus. And, and Jesus, instead of saying, get up, pick up your bed and walk the first time, uh, he said, son, your sins are forgiven you. And, and all the all the leadership that were standing around were thinking in their heart, oh my gosh, who does he think he is? He's he's equating himself with God and forgiving someone's sins. And Jesus said, well, what difference does it make if I say, son, get up and walk or, or your sins be forgiven you? But so you'll know, you know, that it, it's the same power. Jesus died for our sins and our sicknesses. It's the same power sacrifice that he made yes he took stripes on his back but the bible says he's wounded for our transgressions he's bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him by his stripes were healed the, the sacrifice the complete sacrifice that jesus did was for our total salvation was for healing and forgiveness of sins and anyway and yes you know i'm sure this, this man was a sinner we're all sinned all of sin falls short of the glory of god and so he said, go and sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. So the man received his forgiveness of sins, and he received his healing. Amen. Praise God. But then he went and told the Jews and everyone that it was Jesus that had made him well. But anyway. <laughs> um, then in verse 16, we're going to talk about life through the sun. It says, so because Jesus was doing these things on the Sabbath, the Jews persecuted him. And that's kind of what Susie was saying, you know. Uh, not, not to, they weren't thinking about the great miracles that were being done, just the fact that it was being done on the Sabbath, you know. Uh, they were blinded. They, they were blinded to the truth, you know. Yeah. And uh, so many... Uh, People in the world today are blinded to the truth. You know, they they mock uh, the things of God and and this and that. Then verse seventeen says, Jesus said to them, My Father is always at His work to this very day, and I too am working. For this reason, the Jews tried all the harder to kill Him. Not only was He breaking the Sabbath, but He was even calling God His own Father, making Himself equal with God. <clears throat> Jesus gave them this answer. I tell you the truth, the son can do nothing by himself. He can only do what he sees his father doing. Because whatever the father does, the son also does. For the father loves the son and shows all he does. Yes, to your amazement, he will show him even greater than these, greater things than these. For just as the father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the son gives life to whom he is pleased to give it. Moreover, the Father judges no one, but has entrusted all judgment to the Son, that all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Um, you know, if they don't honor Jesus, they're not honoring God the Father. And another thing I think he was saying, too, you know, they were, you know, we'll go back to where in 16, you know, they... They were not only were they mad because he's breaking the Sabbath, but now he's <clears throat> making himself equal with God. Well, what Jesus was trying to tell them has said, look, yeah, it's the Sabbath, but this is what my father's doing. This is my father's still working on the Sabbath. That You know, you might be resting, but my father's still work on the Sabbath, and I'm going to do what my father's doing on the Sabbath. Yeah. <laughs> so. Amen. Yeah. And, you know, he, he's the son of the living God. He came to this earth to show us the love of the Father and the works of the Father. Amen. And they needed to start listening instead of just, you know, they need to start seeking him instead of just getting mad, you know. They knew a Messiah was coming. They shouldn't have been surprised. 
you know, that he's going around doing miracles and saying he's the son. You know, they, they shouldn't, they knew the Messiah was coming. Yeah. Something <laughs> that I like about it is that Jesus came to make a new way, you know, and we have a new covenant through him. And, and he was basically separating that from the law of Moses because these um, priests and uh, religious leaders, they adhered strictly to the law of Mo Moses and also to the additional things that they decided were something that needed to be followed too. And so Jesus is doing these things that are against the way that their, their rules and regulations, but he's still doing God's work. He's not going against God and he's not not being loving. He's doing what God has brought him to do. And I like it that his whole uh, life and everything that he did really symbolizes what he taught as well. He walked the same thing that he taught and um, it really helped make a way. And I think it helped us to see that we're not bound by these laws anymore, at least in that church time. I know that most of us as Christians, we realize that we're not bound by the laws of Moses, but in their time, uh, his followers probably knew all this. I mean, this was written by his followers. This gospel was yeah. God inspired and written by his followers. And, and so they were there to witness this. They knew what Jesus was doing. He didn't do this secretly. He didn't secretly do heal people on the Sabbath. And so he led that same life. So yeah, I do. I like that too. Well, you know, sometimes when we do the will of the father, uh, we make people mad. You yeah. know? Well, you're right. We do. We um, do. You know, I, I was reading, I was keeping up with a, I can't remember, I think it was a 91-year-old man feeding the homeless and they kept arresting him uh, and for feeding the homeless. Because uh, they did on certain, because they made a certain law or city ordinance, yeah. you couldn't feed the homeless uh, on Tuesdays or some stupid thing. I don't thing. remember how many times he got arrested, but I was reading a day or two ago where a judge ordered for him to quit being arrested. Oh, wow. Good. So, Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so God. sometimes... When we do the will of the Father, we might get in trouble, but God will always see us through. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So, anyway, in verse 24, it says, I tell you the truth, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. Man. That's talking about salvation there. And in verse 25, it says, I tell you the truth, the time is coming, and it's come now when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself, and he has given him authority to judge because he is the Son of Man. Do not be amazed at this, for a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done good will rise to live, and those who have done evil will rise to be condemned. By myself I can do nothing. I judge only as I hear, and my judgment is just, for I seek not to please myself, but him who sent me. You know, uh, do not may, be amazed at this, for time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. That's when the trumpet of God will sound and those that are dead in Christ will rise and those of us that are alive and remain will be caught up to meet Jesus in the air. Yeah. Amen. Uh, in verse 31 it says, If I testify about myself, my testimony is not valid. There is another who testifies in my favor, and I know that his testimony about me is valid. You have sent to John, and he has testified to the truth. Not that I accepted human testimony, but I mention it that you may be saved. John was a lamp that burned and gave light, and you chose for time to enjoy his light. I have testimony weightier than that of John. For the very work that the Father has given me to finish, in which I am doing, uh, testifies as the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me has himself testified concerning me. You have uh, never heard his voice, nor seen his form, nor does his word dwell in you, for you do not believe the one who, the one he sent. 
You diligently study the scriptures because you think that by them you possess eternal life. These are the scriptures that testify about me, yet you refuse to come to me to have life. You know, so many people read the Bible and read this and read that, and they think they might get to heaven, but you got to accept and believe Jesus. Amen. And well, and also, um, to me, he was also saying, you search, in verse 39, you search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. These are they which testify of me. So to me, he's also saying, you're searching the scriptures. The scriptures tell about me. Yeah. They foretell about me, but you're not getting it. Yeah. You, you know, that's the testimony of me. Yeah. And then here in a few minutes, we'll talk about what Moses prophesied, but we might yeah. have to share about that. But anyway, I'm sorry, I didn't mean no, to interrupt okay. you. In verse 41, it <laughs> says, I do not accept praise from men, but I know you. I know that you do not have the love of God in your hearts. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me. But if someone else comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe if you accept praise from one another, yet make no effort to obtain the praise that comes from the only God? But do not think that I will accuse you before the Father. Your accuser is Moses, on whom your hopes are set. If you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But since you do not believe what he wrote, how are you going to believe what I say? Amen. Amen. Because he was putting it back on them, you know, because they were saying, well, you know, we don't believe you. We believe Moses. We don't believe you. We believe Moses. You know, they kept saying it all through Jesus' ministry. And he said, okay, well, then Moses is going to judge you. Yeah. Because Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 18, and I'm going to read verses 15 and 18 real quickly. You can go back and read it in more depth if you want later. But Moses, this is Moses talking. He prophesied and said, The Lord your God will raise up to you a prophet like me from your midst, from your brethren. Him you shall hear. And then in verse 18, it says, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brethren. I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And it shall be that whoever will not hear my words, which he speaks in my name, I will require it of him. So Moses was prophesying the words of the Father to the people about Jesus that was going to come someday. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, he's talking about Jesus coming. He said, there's going to come another prophet like unto me. How was Moses? Moses was humble. Yeah. But he was still obeyed God, and he was very powerful. Jesus was humble, but he still obeyed God very boldly yeah. whenever it was the time to. He, yeah. You know, he didn't make something out of himself that wasn't. And, and so that's why he's saying, okay, you believe Moses? You, if you really believed Moses, if you really believed in the things that Moses wrote and what he did, then you would believe me. And so Moses is going to judge you. He's, he's a witness of me too. He <laughs> said, so I don't have to accuse you. Yeah. The one you say you believe in accuses you. That's right. <laughs> yes. I'm glad that you shared that. But I'd like to say one more thing, okay. if you don't mind. I'm sorry, no, did you have something no, to say? No, go ahead. Okay. Um, you know, whenever he's talking about, um, okay, back here in in, uh, in John chapter 5, uh, verse 22, you know, well, in 21 verse, it said, well, let's read the whole thing. I'm sorry, verse okay. 20. I'm sorry, it's hard for me to leave stuff out. I like to read them all together. For the... Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself does. He will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. For as the Father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the Son gives life to whom he will. Verse 22, For the Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son, that all should honor the Son just as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. I really like the part where he says in verse 22, the father judges no one that's committed all judgment to the son. You know, I had a little conviction come on me because, you know, it's easy for us in this life to judge other people. It's just easy for us to do if we're not careful. But uh, I, but I, I really work hard trying not to when these thoughts come to my mind that I don't agree with someone or 
you know, or I think something, I think, I don't know that person. I don't know their heart. I don't know. And, and look, the Father isn't even judging people. Jesus is. So who do I think I am to judge somebody else? You know, and yeah. I'm not saying, you know, you see someone that's definitely out doing evil things, you know, that you don't have the right to know whether that's right or wrong and, and judge it. But, you know, there's little things that we judge people about that aren't that big a deal, too. And, and we, you know, like, like um, if we think a church service is lasting too long or the preacher's preaching too long and we're going, oh, my gosh, do I have to really sit through this? The anointing left him uh, 20 minutes ago. You know, I mean, it's real hard to get into judgment over little yeah. things. And we, we need to be careful about that and just give it to the Lord and ask God to help us to walk in love like he walks in love. You know, we need to be careful who we judge and why we judge them. Yeah. But anyway. Amen. Well, I'll tell you what, I, unless anybody has anything else to say, I think we'll close right there. And next time we uh, come together, we're going to be going over uh, how Jesus fed the 5,000 and Jesus walks on the water and how Jesus is the bread of life. But uh, I think uh, we'll stop right there and, and, uh, before uh, Susie comes on with the salvation prayer, I'm going to ask my son Josh to give you give a few announcements and give you oppor an opportunity to give into the ministry and some contact information and such. Okay, Josh, go ahead. Thanks for joining us again today. We hope you got a lot out of today's Bible study. I know that we did. Um, as always, you can send any of your comments or maybe your questions that you may have to Ministries at gmail.com. We'd love to correspond with you. It doesn't even have to be about tonight's Bible study. If you have a situation that's going on in your life that maybe you're just confused about or maybe something you read in the Bible doesn't make sense to you or a colleague or a co-worker or a friend from somewhere you know, has brought up a topic that you don't understand and yet maybe it questions the Bible, maybe it questions God, maybe it questions your very belief in God or your faith. Well, we would love to help guide you in that through Scripture and through prayer as well. We will pray for you and lift your needs up before the Lord. And you can also call our prayer line at 918-893-5522. All that information is on our website at HanesMinistries.org. Also, you can give to this ministry as well. You can go to our uh, that website, HanesMinistries.org. Go to the Giving tab. And you can click on the pay with PayPal. You can donate via PayPal. And if you don't feel comfortable giving over the internet or just with PayPal, you can also send in a check or money order to P.O. Box 1406, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, 74013, and make that uh, check or money order payable to Haynes Ministries Incorporated. And we're not pushing to give, but we do... Um, encourage you to give to wherever you're being fed. If you're being fed at a local church or someone, some other organization is uh, feeding you in your walk with Christ and in your uh, Bible studies of, of your own, uh, feel free to give in any way that you can. It doesn't have to be financial or just of monetary value. Give of yourself and give as unto the Lord in whatever you do. But you can also give as an offering to Haynes Ministries if you feel blessed and and you don't have to, but we do encourage you to correspond with us. You can email us. We'd love to get in touch. We'd love to help you out in any way that we can. You can also join us live every Sunday at 5 o'clock p.m. Central Time. Just go to our website, HanesMinistries.org. Click on the Join Us Live tab, and we'll be right there every Sunday, 5 o'clock, unless otherwise noted on the website or on our Facebook. You can join us on Facebook or Twitter. Just type in Haynes Ministries Incorporated. We should be right there. We'd love you to come and uh, like our page or come follow us on Twitter. Also, you can find us on YouTube. You can subscribe to our channel. Uh, chances are, if you're watching this, you're already on our YouTube page or you're watching us uh, from our Facebook page or you're watching us from our website. Well, you can find us on YouTube at Haynes Ministries Incorporated. Go to our channel. We have all of our Bible studies listed on there. We have all of our past church services on there. If there's something that you're going through in life right now, just go through all of our church services. There's a title on each one that basically sums up what it's about. Maybe you're struggling with something, and we would love to help. And as always, I encourage you to email us. Maybe you are struggling with something. Well, we can guide you to probably something we've already covered on the subject, and if we haven't covered it yet, we can make 
a Bible study or a service or a sermon dedicated to that situation because I guarantee you one thing, you are not alone in the way that you feel about whatever may be going on in your life. And so by reaching out and trying to help you with scripture, evidence, and proof, and and um, spiritual encouragement, I guarantee you it's not just touching your life, but it's touch- touching others um, in the future that may have your same problem, or maybe even now. So thank you for joining us again. I'm going to turn it over to my mom. If you heard about all of this, and maybe you've heard of Jesus before, and you want to have eternal life, you want to have a personal relationship with Christ himself, you want to give all of your cares to him and not worry about the stresses of this life, well, you're about to have that opportunity to come to know Jesus or to come back into fellowship with him. Praise God. You know, the Bible says in John three sixteen, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. And like Josh said, if you want this everlasting life, Jesus, you know, a lot of us think that we were too bad and we sinned too bad and there's too many mess-ups in our life or we're too bad of a person. Well, Jesus came and he took all your mess-ups and all your sins and all your mistakes on a cross and he paid the penalty, the price for your sin. Then on the third day, God raised him up. Let's say this prayer to accept him as your Lord and Savior. Father in heaven, Father in heaven thank you for sending your son Jesus. Thank you for sending your son Jesus. To die on the cross for my sins. To die on the cross for my sins. I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. So I can have a life free from sin. So I can have a life free from sin. Jesus, be Lord of my life. Jesus, be Lord of my Come into my heart. Come into my heart. And forgive me all my mistakes. And forgive me all my mistakes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer in faith believing, you are now a child of God, or you have rededicated your life to God. Now, this is a new day. Old things have been wiped out. All things are become new. Get out your Holy Bible. Study the scriptures with us. We'll see you next time. Sunday, 5 o'clock p.m. Central Town. God bless you. God bless.